My, my fear with these things is because because Dan and I always do these things completely independent of each other and no sort of compared notes. We're basically going to read out a list of 10 of the same cars each. But Well, we might, and I suspect you've... I do think I've probably covered some ground that you will as well, uh, certainly with this first one. Okay. 2001. Yeah. 59,000 mile. Hang on, let me see if I can tell you what it is. <laughs> it's a Bentley Arnage. It is. <laughs> yes! <laughs> How on earth did you know that? Nineteen thousand pounds. Yes. 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 Because well, you, but you and I may have been looking at the same website. But even so, it is interesting, isn't it, that you and I? But anyway, so I think that, that says something that this is <laughs> certainly under the category of, um, yeah, you know, twenty grand. Or how did you put it? Tw- twenty but, grand. But you must be for trouble. Or asking for trouble. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Bentley Arnage. So what we've both picked um, picked out a Bentley Arnage. What are they actually like, those cars? What were they like new? What do you suspect they're like 20 plus years on? Okay, so there are Arnages and there are Arnages. Right, so you have to be careful and get the right one. So this is a 2001, so it's post Volkswagen. Yeah. Okay, so the really important thing about that is um, when Volkswagen came in and they looked at the Arnage, they were a bit horrified. (laughs) (laughs) I can remember there was a a German engineering director um, called Hans-Jürgen Rothenpiller, who was the first Volkswagen head of engineering at Bentley. And when I said to him, what did you find, What did you think when you first got here? He just went, stop production. Oh, blimey. Anyway. Things were probably done in a very British way, weren't they? Well, in a very British cottage industry, yeah. oldie worldy, quaint, yeah. charming, but not perhaps necessarily terribly good way anyway so the important thing is is that volkswagen came in in 1990 well they think they bought the company in 97 98 anyway this is 2001 so this is post volkswagen volkswagen spent more money re-engineering the arnage than vickers who'd owned the company until then had spent engineering the arnage um wow and job one which was really expensive because the car unbelievably was never designed to take it was to put the old six and three quarter litre yeah. V8 back in it, the push rod, the famous old push rod engine. Um, and this is a, a red label. So that mm. means it has this able, that has this engine in it. If it were a green label, that would mean it would have the BMW 4.4 litre V8. Oh, no, 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 no. Um, with a Cosworth installed twin turbo installation, which was actually a fairly yeah. decent engine. It should just never have gone anywhere near a Bentley. It's not the right, not the right V8 for a Bentley. No, no. <laughs> so, yeah. So this is two thousand and one. So these, these are the, these are the cars because I was um, for three years. I stopped writing about Bentleys in any professional capacity because I was writing a book about Bentleys, um, particularly about their their return to Le Mans. Um, and so I was kind of slightly on their payroll for a bit, so I didn't think that I could write it. But it, what it did mean is I spent a lot of time smoking around with these cars, mm. um, particularly um, going to tests in Europe, but mainly going to Le Mans in 2001, 2002, 2003. I was always given my own honor <laughs> <laughs> to travel in. Lovely. And so I'd just sort of, you know, fill up this massive old barge with all my clobber and head off to France for 10 days. And I have very, very happy memories of them. Um, they were lovely things. Um, they were just, they were still built from the most amazing materials. They may not have been built. In fact, by 2001, they were built, being built massively better. And even in the early days of the Arnage, uh, there was no problem with the quality of the materials. It was just some of the way that they were put together. Um and yeah, they were great. They were fantastic things. They were surprisingly fast. They were utterly effortless. And the fact that they're, you know, they didn't have much technology on them and they looked like a sort of, you know, inside of a boardroom was all just sort of part of it. Mm. Um, they were lovely. I mean, they weren't particularly sporting, um, you know, more sporting versions. Things like the 400 horsepower Arnage T came along, but this isn't one of those. Um but it was just a lovely old thing to smoke about in. And mm. I have very, very fond memories of them. Um, and there's a bit of me which, I mean, what would I do with it? I have absolutely <laughs> no idea. But, but apart from the fact that I would be amused by it and my family would be amused by it yeah. and my friends would be amused by it. Um, <clears throat> how troublesome are they? It, it, it won't be the big stuff. Really? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. the engine's the, the engine a will solid be, old lump, isn't absolutely it? Absolutely indestructible. I mean, it'll just be naggy little electronic things mm. but they're probably really expensive to fix mm. 
I don't know whether also, you know, we're talking about a car which is, what, 23 years old now? So they've probably started to rot a bit. Yeah. And you wouldn't want to sort of, you know, go digging around too much in the wheel arches of those. So that might be quite an expensive way of passing the time. Um, but that, honestly, I think if you drove one of those, you'd be utterly charmed by it. Mm, I can well imagine. Yeah. Um, now, I'm just thinking, a friend of ours, Chris Harris, for a short time had a Rolls-Royce Phantom as a bit of a punt. Um, that got quite expensive, didn't it? It got extremely yeah. expensive. And I'm just thinking, a 20 grand Arnage is probably a much better uh, option if you if you want something big and wafty like that. I, th- I, I think it wouldn't bleed you quite as white as a Phantom. Yeah. No, I, I don't think it would bleed you anything like as white as a Phantom. Mm. There, is also, there is also a fabulous company called... What's it called? I think called Flying Spares. Oh, brilliant. And they break old rolls and Bentleys. And so the thing is, is that they've got so many of these. I've been to their place and they've just got these things just stacked up. I mean, it's quite sad, actually. Wow. You see these, a graveyard. Yeah, and it really is. But but the point being, because these cars were, okay, they weren't made in vast numbers, but they're made over quite a long period of time. So there were an awful lot. There were quite a lot of them still around. You'll be able to go and get bits. You'll be able to go and get the bits um, that you need. So they're probably, you know, I'm not saying that they will be in any way, you know, affordable or whatever. But, you know, I, I would suspect, certainly compared to something like a Phantom, which is a much more esoteric product made in much smaller numbers, I would think that you could look after an Arnage on a much more sensible budget. Mm. I would have thought so. Mm. Um, I'm just going to do one more because I, I want to segue neatly here. Okay. okay. So can I? Okay. Tell. T- <laughs> go on. So, give me a year and give me the miles, and I'll see if it's on. <laughs> no, 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 not yet. Uh, oh, I will do in a moment. But I mean, you can tell I'm still in my six liter plus zone, right? There are so many Bentley Continental GTs and Bentley Flying Spurs yeah. available at this moment. I didn't put any of them on mine because I thought it was unimaginative. That's exactly what I thought. Yeah. There are so many, and you realise how many they sold. Um, yeah. And actually, in a recent podcast, we spoke about the Bentley W12, and I think you said 100,000 had been built. Yes. Bloody hell. Yeah. Anyway, I didn't... Some of those went into... Ah, I know. VW Phaetons? Yes, and... And, and, and an Audi A8? Yes, which is what I've got here. Oh, very good. Uh, so that's why I chose the, the A8, not yeah, the Contact but, but you're not paying 20 grand for an A8 W12, are you? 18,000. Really? Mm-hmm. 18 grand for a 2012 car. Yeah. Long wheelbase. Yeah. 500 horsepower, apparently. Yeah. 68,000 miles. Yeah. Um, Audi A8 W12. I think that's quite a lot of money. Do you? 18 grand. It's a 2012 car. So yeah. it's not 20 years old, you know? It's... No. Oh, well, yeah, maybe. But yeah. that, that as, a, as an alternative to <laughs> the ubiquitous flying spur at this money, I thought that was quite interesting. I just have a spur. Would you? Yeah. Oh, but if you're going to go down that road, go down that road. Keep going. Okay, okay, fair enough. I mean, a spur. I mean, so the, the other thing I would I would say, I didn't put a, a spur or a GT down on my list, but um, and I might have mentioned this on a previous podcast. Um, I once did a comparison for Autocar where we had a, a Lamborghini Gallardo, we had a DB9, and we were meant to have a Continental GT. Continental GT didn't turn up because the dealer sold it on the day we meant to borrow it. And so I just rang up and we go, you can't do this to us. We've got an entire test of it. And he said, well, the only other car I've got is this thing that's just turned up. It's completely knackered. Nothing's pointing in the right direction. All the wheels are mullered. Um, we haven't even looked at it, but we'll send it. And, and this, this Continental GT turned up. It had done a bazillion miles. It was completely ruined. And it felt far and away the best built solid of the three of them. <laughs> yeah, so they're, they're tough then. So I would think, actually, and again, don't take my word for it, but I would think um, an early Spur or an early Continental GT is probably pretty tough, mm. pretty resilient. I think they built them bloody well, mm. unlike an Arnage <laughs> or an early Arnage, yeah. certainly. That um, is interesting. Maybe we should have put and, them on and, the list. And, the, and the, it's just stacks of power, isn't it? I mean, yeah. it's 552 horsepower. I think that's the, less, the least power they ever had. Mm. Um, and it's a Bentley. It would be a great way to smoke around, <laughs> yeah. no question. Uh, okay, well, give us one of yours then. Hang on, what do you pay for? Oh, you got me interested now. What do you pay for? What would you pay for? I bet you could get a spur for like 15 grand, couldn't you? I'm sure you could. Wow. It's a 200 mile an hour car, 15 grand. It's a genuine 200 mile an hour car. 